So unit 4.4.1 and I'll include 4.1.2 in here as well. Metal oxides and the reactivity series. So, metals react with oxygen to produce metal oxides. You've come across this, loads of examples. The reaction that gains oxygen is called oxidation. So anything that is, there's a gaining of oxygen, you know you can call that an oxidation reaction. So when metals react with other substances, they form positive ions. So when a metal reacts with oxygen, it becomes a plus ion, a positive ion, and it forms an ionic compound. So how does this relate to reactivity? Well, a more reactive metal forms a positive ion by losing electrons more easily. So reactivity is linked to the ability of an atom to lose electrons. The easier it loses electrons, the more reactive the metal is. So the reactivity of metals can be compared by reactions with water and with dilute acid. Now, you remember back to alkali metals group 1. If you put lithium, sodium and potassium in water, you'll see the different reactivity. Lithium will move around um, and react um, quite violently, uh, but not compared to sodium. Sodium which moves on the surface of the water, forms a sphere and moves quickly and reacts faster than lithium. And then potassium, when you put that in water, it will be within a second, it'll actually ignite and it'll burn with a lilac flame, um, which is a, a more vigorous reaction. From that, we can tell that potassium will lose an electron to form an ion more easily than sodium and lithium. And sodium reacts more vigorously than lithium because it forms a positive ion more easily than lithium. After group one, we look at group two, which you've got calcium and magnesium. Calcium gains, uh, loses electrons and forms an, a positive ion more easily than magnesium because it's further down the group. Um, so therefore it's more reactive. Then we look at the transition metals. We look at zinc, we look at iron, we look at copper in terms of reactivity. And those are all metals that you must know. There are others that you might want to include in your knowledge, but definitely make sure you know those in that order. So, what can a more reactive metal do to a less reactive metal? Well, if a less reactive metal in a compound is reacted with a more reactive metal, a more reactive metal can displace or remove or kick out a less reactive metal from a metal compound. These are some examples that you need to know about from extracting metals. You need to know that iron will react with copper sulfate to make iron sulfate and copper. And we use this experiment this equation when we want to produce pure copper, maybe from phyto mining or bio leaching. Next, iron oxide in a blast furnace reacts with carbon. This is called carbon reduction and it produces carbon dioxide and iron. And it's the iron that we want to be produced from the blast furnace.